Welcome back to another AI automation tutorial, where today I'm going to be showcasing how you can automate and deploy AI agents that can query data for you. And this is through a chatbot. This is something that we're going to be doing through Vectorship. For the people who do not know, I have created this series where I start using apps that I showcase on this channel and try to showcase real world use cases. Now, for the people who do not know, VectorShift is actually a great platform because it's quite easy to create AI agents with its drag and drop UI. It's something that's ideal for AI automation and requires no code where it can enable anyone to build AI search engines, assistants, chatbots, AI agents, as well as automations. So throughout today's video, what we're going to be doing is showcasing how to create AI agents that can work with tabular data. And this is so that they can read and process numerical values better than large language models would. And this is because they're usually trained to focus more on contextual context rather than numerical data. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating an AI agent that will be able to process large amounts of numerical data from something like a financial statement of Ford. And what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be having it so that it can process and answer questions about Ford's performance but also more about pricing structures, financial reports, and about other related data. This is something that many are quite interested in and it's something that I'll be showcasing throughout today's video as I showcase how to create the flow on VectorShift and how to automate this. So with that thought guys, stay tuned and let's get straight into the video. So what I want you guys to do first is click on the get started button if you haven't created an account with VectorShift. This is something that you can do quite easily. Get started with a GitHub account or your Gmail account. And once you have created your account, you can then head over to the pipeline page. This is your dashboard where you're going to be creating and managing all your pipelines. You have a marketplace where you can access other created flows, which you can basically get started with right away. These are templates that you can import into your own pipeline list. And you can basically utilize these different agents for your own benefits. For example, you can automate email drafts, you can automate investment memos, and you can just basically take a look at all these other categories that can help you out. There is a storage component where you can implement different storages, such as your own knowledge base. You have automations that you can work with, chatbots, evaluations, as well as many other components. But what we're going to be doing is working with the pipeline. So first things first, we're going to head over to the pipeline section. We're going to click on the new button and you can see over here that you can create a pipeline from scratch or you can utilize the other templates which we mentioned before but since we are going to be automating our flow from scratch we're going to be clicking on this button over here and there you go this is our ui of vector shift so in this automation let me actually provide some more context this is obviously a hypothetical example where there is a chatbot for an automobile company and this is ford but think of it like a used car dealership that maybe resells Ford cars. Now imagine that you have this chatbot where we're going to be automating and creating it. And this flow is something that will be able to provide and allow customers the ability to ask for the pricing structure of the cars that are available. And this is in CSV format, but it will also be able to provide like answers to general questions about the Ford car itself. So first things first, for any automation, you start off with an input node and then we can obviously add an output node after we figure out where this prompt is going to be heading. So since we're creating an AI agent through a chatbot, we're going to be just simply creating an input and output node where this automation will function between these two nodes. Sorry for being repetitive, but this month we had insane partnerships with big companies giving out subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. These are tools that will streamline your business's growth and improve your efficiency. Just being a patron this past month, you were given access to six paid subscriptions completely for free. Not only do you access these subscriptions, but you gain the ability for consulting, networking, collaborating with the community, as well as with myself. You get access to daily AI news, resources, giveaways, and so much more. If you're interested, check out the Patreon link in the description below to gain access to these benefits. Now, what we're going to be doing is heading over to the large language model category. And this is where you can basically select various other large language model nodes that you would want to implement into your workflow. You can choose open source and closed source models. In this case, we're going to be using OpenAI's GPT-4 model. And we're going to be utilizing this GPT-4 model 
as it's the best performing one and this node will be basically classifying the questions where it basically knows how to respond to questions about pricing about the questions that are related to ford and it's going to be able to process these questions in that manner but what we're going to be doing next is also adding a condition statement that is going to be routing the questions sent from sent into the chatbot so that the chatbot agents can basically like analyze what is happening and it will basically utilize the condition statement to process which area that question will be going whether that's an open ai large language model node which is going to be used to process general questions or where it's going to be heading over to the next node which is going to be processing the, processing the csv formatted question so i went along and i basically gave this open ai large language model node a system prompt where i told it that you are an expert classification agent for ford this is where your job is to classify whether the question is about pricing or about general information on ford cars if the question is about pricing respond with pricing for all other types of questions respond with ford and this is basically the type of classification i'm going to be having so that there is next a condition statement that will then process this question so since we don't have a file what we're going to be doing is basically converting this financial statement of ford and we're going to be basically extracting all the prices for different models and different cars so i actually went along and i have basically done this already where i have provided all the models all the different years of that model and i provided the pricing structure for it so what i'm going to be doing is now i'm going to be feeding this data to our chatbot so that it can provide our customers the context of which model is available for that ford car so that they can potentially purchase that car now to improve the query itself we're going to be inputting another large language model node so that we're going to be actually able to improve the outcome of the generation from the csv query loader and this is basically going to have a job where it's going to convert the question into a specific format and this is where i told it that the table that we had provided has three different columns it has a model column a price as well as a year column and basically what we're going to be doing is extracting that information from our very own csv file and it's going to be able to process that question so that it can define two metrics it's going to be able to define the two metrics that are stated here which is model and year so for example if you receive a query that is what is the price of the 2018 ford focus the output that you're going to be getting is that what is the price of the car with the model focus and year 2018 a cool way to see the csv query loader is that it's practically an agent that is recursively calling itself until it's getting the right answer so now that we have stated the pricing conditions we're going to be now creating another node in the data loaders and this is where we're going to be inputting a csv query node and this is basically going to be used to process the csv queries and in other words it's a node that will process the numerical data and this is where we would also need to input a file load which will help us in this case so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be loading the data which is through this file node and this would also mean that we integrate different sorts of csv files through this node and one thing to know is that you would want to uncheck this tick mark so that it doesn't process the different files into text now what i have done is basically focused on the second condition which is about general questions about ford and this is where i created a knowledge base to query and this is where i fed the knowledge base my own content and i actually provided it the financial statement of ford of this current year and if we are to click on our financial statement or if we are to click on edit, edit knowledge base we can basically add our own document this is where you can go to the loader type and select file we can select the file which is the ford annual report and if you do not know how to access this you can go back to our main pipeline page click on login and once you are here in this dashboard you can go to storage and you can basically upload your own knowledge base and this way you're going to be able to connect it within your pipeline so you can just simply add it once you have done that you can rename it to whatever you want and once that is saved you can then just click on closing this button and you should have your knowledge base ready but this is something that you can create 
your new knowledge base with and say if you want to create another knowledge base you can go to the advanced settings tweak it a little bit and you can have it so that it is editable to have other components for example you can have different loader types which is integrations url you have recursor url which is really useful you have wikipedia youtube archive and as well as git I have also inputted a large language model node, which is quite basic in chat format. And then I have also inputted a memory node, which is going to help process all these queries. And lastly, I went over to the logic node and I added a merger node. And this is basically where it's going to be merging all three branches together. And it will be able to process all the queries outwards to the output node. So we can see that we have all three large language model nodes. We have the condition, you have the file processor, as well as a CSV query loader. And then we also have a knowledge base, a chat memory, and another large language model node for the different queries that are sent for general purposes or general questions. So to see if this is actually functional, what we can do is head over to this config button at the top right, click on it, and then you want to go to run pipeline. And what we're going to be doing is just asking a simple question. What is the price of a 2018 Ford Focus? And then we're going to just simply click on the run button on the bottom. And you can see that the pipeline is functioning from this input. It is then asking it. It is then going through the conditions. It will then reference. Since it's asking for a price, it will reference through the CSV query loader. And it will reference the file that we have uploaded, which is this file over here. And it's going to be able to provide us an answer. And we can see that. The price of a car uh, with model focus and year 2018 is 14k which is great and it's going to be able to give us the right correct answer based off of this flow which is just amazing something cool to note is that within the csv query loader we're actually postgres where we are actually performing natural language sql to get the optimized response now we can basically go back to this input and we can ask it what is Ford as a company? And we can then simply just ask it this question once I get the correct question symbol, and then we can click enter. And within a couple of seconds, we're going to be able to get a response. Sorry, we're going to have to click on the run button, and we can see that it will be then able to process this question through the other condition, which is where it is going to be able to provide an answer through the contextual large language model node. And we can see that Ford Motor Company is blah, blah, blah. And it gives us a description about the company. And we can see that this condition is functional. It is able to process pricing, numerical values, and also contextual values through these different branches, which is amazing to see. Once you are done with this automation, what you can do now is deploy it as a chatbot, which is really cool. You can basically export this chatbot so that other people can access it through different functionalities. In this case, we're going to be just creating this Ford chatbot for data. And we can describe it and then we can click on save. We can configure the pipeline, but you can head over to the functionality where you can edit certain components of the chatbot, where you can add your own logo. You can style it to however you want. You can change the accents. You can export it where you can basically open this chatbot into a whole new web page like this. So you can basically have it so that other people can access this pipeline and start chatting with it such as your own team or your own company you can have it so that it is integrated through whatsapp or sms you can export this api integrate it within slack which is really cool and what's the best use case for me is that you can embed this into your website so since i'm an e-commerce manager myself where i run different e-commerce brands i can input this chatbot that i just created for this AI agent that I created and I can basically import it into my own e-commerce site where it's going to be able to process different data source. So this is something that you can get started with quite easily and this is how you can deploy this chatbot or this automation and various other components. And that's about it for today's video where I showcase how you can use an AI agent to query data with VectorShift. This is something that I'm going to be continuously working on where I create practical use cases of AI because many of us keep asking me how to create different practical use cases of AI and I feel like this series will be really beneficial for a lot of us where I'm going to be able to provide best use cases as well as the best automations where you can get started right now. 
So with that thought, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some sort of value out of it. I'll leave all the links as to what I used in today's video in the description below. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity. And with that thought, I'll see you guys fairly shortly.